Hello everyone. In this demo, we will be showcasing how to control timeline via code. Now, as I've explained before in class, there are many ways in which we can use code to control either movie clips, playback, or timelines. As you all know, code resides either within frames, movie clips, or separate as what we call an AS file, an action script file not much different than the way a JavaScript file is created when we have an animation that is HTML5 targeted. So as you saw in previous examples, we would export an HTML5 document and it would create not only the HTML5 document, but it would also create a JS file that would be attached to that HTML5 document. If you want those files to play back, you would have to move both files, the HTML5, HTML5 file and the JavaScript file into your web server. So for this example, what I want to do is I want to create a new movie clip. So just to showcase how timeline works, I am going to create a new movie and I'm for the intents and purposes of this particular lecture, I am going to be using action script. So I'm going to use the default settings, standard 30 FPS action script. I'll simply click, click create. And what I want to do is I want to leverage some of the items in this movie clip that have already been pre-animated. So in this movie clip, when I test this, you will notice that the cloud is going across the screen. The windmill is rotating. The arrows are moving down on the pipes and the circular arrows are rotating. So I want to use the, the, the cloud, the windmill and the rotating arrows. Those are the things that I will be leveraging. So going back to animate, what I want to do is in my new document, I want to use the library for that movie clip by going into library and choosing it from the drop down, And then I want to move the new elements into this timeline. So I'll go ahead and say the windmill will be the first one that I want to use. I will also be using the cloud, like I said, so I'll place the cloud there and I will be using the rotating arrows. Now you'll notice that as I select these pre-animated uh, movie clips. You have a little play button up here under their um, descriptor. So if I hit play on that button, I can actually see a preview of the animation of the animation inside the library. So that preview helps me know that that's in fact the symbol that I'm looking for. So in this case, I want the rotating arrows. I'll place them there and we are good. All those elements have been moved into my new library right here, you see them all. There is the windmill, there is the rotating arrows, and there's the cloud. And and there is inside them, there's any, any other files or any other symbols that have been embedded within those animations. That's the rest of the materials that you see here. So all of that came into my new library. I don't need them on the stage right now, so I'm gonna select everything and I'm going to remove them. Then I'm gonna create a workflow for me. What I want to do is I wanna have the ability to click on something and move down the timeline or backwards upstream on the timeline. So that's the interactivity that I will be adding onto my movie clip. To do this, I also want to create an element that is a button or something that I can tag as something that I can click. So let me go ahead and click and select my rectangle tool. I want to just go ahead and click a little rectangle. I'm going to select that rectangle. And as you see, it is a shape object, so nothing magical on that. I am going to convert it into a symbol by going modify, convert a symbol or pressing the F8 key on the keyboard. And in this case, I want to make it a movie clip. That's what I want to work with. And you will ask yourselves, why a movie clip? Why not a button if you're going to be clicking on it? When it comes to clicking and coding, movie clips and buttons work interchangeably. You can make anything a button. So a movie clip can be a button. A button can be a button. A graphic cannot be a button because it cannot be instanced. And what that means is I cannot give it a name on the stage. So when I put a graphic on the stage, there's no way I can give it a name to say this is called this. That naming action is what allows me to make a movie clip or a button into a button. So or basically anything that's a movie clip or a button to be recognized by code. So it is that naming convention that I need to pay attention to. So I'm going to call this button and I'm going to make it a movie clip for this instance. I'll click OK and there is my button. I'm going to delete it and you'll notice that it is now in my library. There it is. So I can always bring it back. So now let's get organized on my um, 
layer one, I want to make this the windmill animation. So I'm gonna rename it windmill. There we go. And then I'm gonna create me another layer and this one's gonna be the rotating circle. And I am going to create another layer called navigation, which is where my buttons will be going. And then I am going to create yet another layer called actions. Okay, so that is basically the breakdown of my composition. This is how I am going to lay out all the elements in my composition. In the first frame, I will be placing the windmill animation. There it is, that's my first frame. I will also place on the, under the nav, I will be placing my button, button one, okay? Then I'm gonna make a copy of that button and I'm gonna place another instance right here and that will be button two. So these two buttons will be my navigation for where I'm about to do. First frame contains my, let me organize this so that it looks a little bit, at least a bit organized. So my first frame will take me to my windmill my second animation will take place at around frame 10. So let's go ahead and extend all frames to frame 10. And under the rotating circle, I am going to create an empty keyframe by pressing F7 on the keyboard or adding a frame from here and saying blank frame, you know, if you wanna use the shortcut from the drop down menu here. And then under that empty frame, I will be placing my rotating arrows. Now, I don't need to see that windmill at this point, so I really, honestly, I only need to see it on the first frame. So I'm gonna reduce all that to one single frame right there. So I'm gonna delete all of those frames by pressing Shift F5. So first, I select the frames, and then I go Shift F5 to remove them. And so now I have an animation happening here and an animation happening here. Let me center this onto the stage. Now remember, these are embedded animations. So if I double click in here, you'll notice that I have an animation playing in there. And if I go to my rotating windmill, if I double click on it, I see that I have an animation in there. So they are embedded animations. Now, right now, this will, if I test this, this will tend or try to play through and through. That's basically what it's going to do because the movie by itself is gonna try to play. So the first thing I need to tell this movie is to stop playing. That is the first thing I need to do. So to stop a movie from playing, I need to create what is called a stop action. So now there are several ways of doing this. You can think of uh, action scripting as basically a way of ordering your movie around or ordering your program to do the things that you need it to do. So where do you do this? go to your window dropdown and go to the actions panel right here or F9 for a shortcut. Now here is where you actually start typing your code. Now you could type your code if you want to or you could use what we call snippets which is this right here. Now I'm going to do this with snippets so you, ac you actually see how this works. I am going to click on the snippets tool and it opens up the tool for either are you working with HTML5 or with ActionScript. If I look at the name of my movie, I don't see Canvas there, so this must be an ActionScript movie. So I'll go ahead and up, open up the ActionScript movie. Now, what am I trying to do? What is the action I'm trying to do? I am trying to do timeline navigation. So I want to control this movie and I want it to stop at this frame. That's what I want. So let me select my first frame on my actions layer and then what I want to do is simply double click stop at this frame. So if I double click on this, you will notice two things. The actions movie now, the first frame has a little A on top of it, which indicates that there's code inside it. And in my actions movie, I got something, I got some text. Now the text is basically an explanation as to what this code is down here. The code really is just that word right there stop, open, close parenthesis, semicolon. Anything that is between a forward slash and an asterisk and an asterisk and a forward slash, it's what we call a comment. So this is typical from HTML documents or from JavaScript or from any scripting language. You will leave comments and the comments usually indicate what the code is doing. So in this case, this is saying the animate timeline will stop pause at the frame where you insert this code. 
which is this code. Now, this is the actual code that you need. You do not need the comments. I am going to leave the comments for now so that you know what they do. But in reality, you do not need the comment. comment. If you remove the comment, then nothing happens. Basically, it doesn't affect your code. This is what the program is looking at. Stop. So if I, let me go ahead and select all this under my actions panel. And I'm going to cut it just to not have it. Just to have that I have a clean slate. So no code. Let me test my movie without the code to see what we see. So my movie is going to be all jumpy. It's going to be all over the place. And that is because this playback is basically playing back like so. Let me stop that test. Basically, it's the same thing as if I was doing, please loop that animation. And I extend my playback, and then I hit play. Basically, that is what my movie is doing. My playback is just playing because I'm not telling it to stop on the first frame. So go, going back to the first frame right there where I want this to stop, I am going to paste again what I had cut a second ago. And now when I play this back, the movie is going to stop on the first frame, so no playback from the playback head, but my animation, the embedded animation inside that movie clip is going to play through and through. As you can see, the animation is playing. Okay. Now, what we want to do then is we want to use the navigation tools to move to the next frame. This frame, this button will take me to frame 1. This button will take me to frame 10. That's what I want to do so that my code recognizes what frame, what, what movie clips or what am I clicking on? I need to use that naming convention that I mentioned before. So we did name our files in our library and that is just for the naming convention of the library. But any instance of any movie clip that I will want to modify or control via code, I need to name on the stage. And for that, I need to select the item on the stage or the, the instance of that item on the stage, then go to properties. And then right here at the top under the properties, we see the naming window, instance name. So I'm going to call that button one, BTN1. Okay, you probably notice that I use lowercase naming conventions for the instances in capital letters for the library. And that is so that I can differentiate. This is the name that I use in the library or what we call the class name for that object. And over here is the instance name of that class on the stage. So it's the instance name of that movie clip on the stage. This one will be called button two, BTN two. Hit return and there you have it. Now you have button one and button two to, to work with. Those are the two buttons that I will be using as navigation. So. With, if I select button one, then I'll go back to my snippet code and I'll say, hey, uh, what do I want to do with this button one? Well, when I click on button one, I go, I want to go to and stop a specific fr a frame. So I have click, go to frame and stop. Click, go to play. So you have options whether you want to go. I, when I click on this, I want to go to frame one and stop on that frame. I don't want this animation to play. I don't want this to happen. I don't want the playback head to go through. So I wanted to jump to that frame and basically stop the playback right there. That's what I want. So I'll select the, the button and I'll say go to frame and stop. So if I double click on that, you will notice that the code, the, the snippet creates code for me below my stop action. And it tells me, it gives me an indication of, as to what this is going to do. It says, the click go to frame and stop. Clicking on the specified symbol instance moves the playback head to the specified frame, blah, blah, and it will not play. Now it gives you instructions on what to replace. And it says, please replace the number frame that you're trying to target. So in this case, this the code here is saying, go to and stop on frame five. I really want it to go to and stop on frame one. So if I select that five on the code and replace it with a one, now that code, when I click on that button, is going to jump to frame one. Now, like I said before, all of this is comment, so we don't need it. Real in reality, this is my code here, and we'll break down this code in the near future as to what is what. But just in short, know that basically what we've done is we added a listener to that button, and the listener is calling a function and the function is making the playback head go to frame one and stop. That's basically the, the, the short of the program. Now let's do that for frame for button two. Let me select button two on the stage. 
let's go to my snippet. I want this one to go to and stop frame 10. So double click on that. And just like with the other one, I'll go ahead and change my number five for number 10. And that is that. Let me go ahead and collapse my snippets really quick. Remember to open up the snippets, you use this little open close carrots on the code window on the actions window. Let me move this down here so that it's not on the way. And let's go ahead and play this back. The movie by default has a stop action. The very first thing in the movie is a stop action. So the movie clip is playing the embedded movie clip that has the animation in it, but the movie itself on the main timeline on scene one is not moving. Then when I click on my button one, on my button two, I should jump to frame 10, which is the circle arrows. So if I click there, I see the circle arrows playing as an animation in frame 10. If I play, if I click on frame on uh, button one, it goes back to frame one, which basically allows me to create nonlinear animation within my timeline, giving me control as to where I want to go. All I really need to do is pre-plan how I want this connections between buttons and, um, and frames where they're going within my timeline in order to create that timeline control and, um, and basically create interactivity that is nonlinear. So once again, we go ahead, the, the process is we select whatever movie clip or button we want to activate and then using the snippets, we go to whether you're working on HTML5 or Canva uh, or ActionScript, you choose which one applies to you. And this time, this in this instance, we're doing timeline, nav timeline navigation. Then we choose the action from there. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of snippets in there and we will be working with some of those as we progress throughout the semester. So uh, for now, timeline navigation is what we want. And that is how you manipulate going up or downstream on your timeline dynamically by using buttons and code.